Are you looking to be more productive with your iPhone or your iPad? We've already given you some productivity apps for iOS, but now we have some more. I'm Taylor Martin, this is Pocket Now, and here are three more productivity apps for iOS. In our last video on Android applications, we said new apps pop up each week. That's especially true on the App Store, but what's even more abundant on iOS are great productivity applications you can't find on Android. Two of the applications we're about to list are iOS exclusives. So without any further delay, here are three more productivity apps for iOS. Vesper is a relatively new iOS application that's taking the avid note takers by storm. It's a genuinely nice app that's easy to use. Like many other note taking applications, Vesper gets all the clutter and noise out of your way and lets you focus on what matters most, typing out important things before you forget them. All notes are kept in a single stream, but you can drag to rearrange notes in whatever order you want, and you can group related notes by using a simple tagging system. To remove a note from all note stream, simply drag it to the left and it will be archived. You can access the archive from the navigation menu to the left, and you can restore or delete archive notes by dragging them to the left once again and choosing your action. Personalization options are also included, though you can only change the typography so much, size, weight, and cap style. You can also sync your notes using Vesper, which will certainly be more helpful when the Mac app is released. Vesper is currently $2.99 in the App Store, and although there are many free alternatives, the Polish and UX in this particular app is awesome. Another note-taking application worth noting is Day 1. Instead of jotting down notes and reminding yourself to do something in the future, Day 1 is a journal to help you remember the things you've already done. And unlike Vesper, which gets all the clutter out of your way, Day One provides you with all the tools you'll need to recreate those memories in a digital journal. It allows you to add current weather and location to your journal entries, a photo, tags, music clips, motion activity, and a daily step count, so long as you have the iPhone 5S. In Day One, you can also add tags, but the list of journal entries in the timeline will always be chronological. You can filter by photos, tags, starred, and other metrics. You can also view your entries in the calendar view by year or by which stories you've published. Yes, you can publish your journal entries on the web if you so dare. Day One supports Markdown text formatting, iCloud or Dropbox sync, and PDF export. Day One is $4.99 and it's worth every penny if you want a quick, fully featured mobile means of documenting the best memories in your life. In the last iOS video, I talked about Fantastical 2. It's still one of the best iOS calendars out there, but there's no denying that at $7.99, it's a little steep for a mobile calendar app, even if it does have natural language event entry. Fortunately, I found an alternative, Sunrise Calendar, that is very similar in appearance and feature sets, though it admittedly doesn't support natural language entry, which is a bummer. The UI is very similar and even easier to navigate, and it comes with support for reminders from various third-party sources, like Evernote, TripIt, LinkedIn, Foursquare, and more. It also has weather and forecast built directly into your agenda timeline. Best of all, Sunrise Calendar is completely free and available via web and Android as well. If you have some favorite productivity apps you'd like to share, feel free to drop them in a comment below. Folks, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, be sure to help us out by clicking the thumbs up button below. And of course, subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this one in the future. Be sure to follow us in all the usual places, Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus at Pocket Now. I'm Taylor Martin, you can find me on Twitter at CasperTech, and I will see you next time.